After several years of missteps, intrigues, legislative somersault and restarts, President Mohamed Buhari has finally signed the Petroleum Industry Bill into law on the 16th of August 2021. But Nigeria now has an act providing for legal, governance, regulatory and fiscal framework for the Nigerian petroleum industry, the host communities and for related matters. The president has approved a steering committee to oversee the process of implementation of the newly signed uh, Petroleum Industry Act. Now, the steering committee is headed by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timipre Silva. On the show today, we will give insight into understanding its impact on the oil and gas sector. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Now, before we get into the Petroleum Industry Act, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has held the recent appeal court's judgment affirming its appraisership of the oil mining license 11, OM11, uh, describing it as a huge victory for Nigeria. The corporation gave the commendation in a statement signed by its spokesperson, Garba Dean Mohammed in Abuja, on Friday. Uh, let's now take uh, all the stories that made headlines in the world of business in Nigeria this week. On Monday, President Muhammad Buhari signed the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB 2021, into law. Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Additional, disclosed this in a statement he issued in Abuja. According to the statement, Working from home in five days quarantine, as required by the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, after returning from London on Friday, August 13th, the President assented to the bill on Monday, August 16th, in his determination to fulfill his constitutional duty. The foreign exchange reserves in Nigeria have started declining again, after rising to $33.59 billion, the highest level in more than a month. The Forex reserves, which fell to a record low of $33.09 billion on July 12th, had gained $500 million in almost a month to close at $33.59 billion on August 10, according to the latest data from the Central Bank of Nigeria. The reserves, however, declined to $33.58 billion on August 12th, the CBN data showed. The abandonment of farmlands and accounts of the insecurity by farmers, herders, clashes and rising incidents of kidnappings left food inflation at 21.03% in July 2021. Although the rate of rise was a bit slower compared to 21.83% recorded in June, the high level of inflation during the month in review meant that Nigerians continue to pay more for lesser food items, thereby weakening their purchasing power. This is even as the latest Consumer Price Index CPI report put the inflation rate at 17.38% in July year-on-year, -year, or 0.37 percent points lower than the rate recorded in June 2021, 17.75%, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Data collected from the CBN have shown that the federal government's total borrowings from the Central Bank of Nigeria through ways and means advances had ballooned to 15.51 trillion naira, rising by 2,286% in six years. The 15.51 trillion naira owed by the federal government to the Central Bank is not part of the country's total public debt stock which stood at 33.11 trillion naira as of March 2021, according to the Debt Management Office. The public debt stock comprises the debts of the federal government of Nigeria, the 36 state governments and the federal capital territory. Minister of Niger Delta, Gotula Pabio, says the federal government has commenced the process 
of recovering $4 billion urged by the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, by international oil companies. The minister said this on Thursday during the weekly ministerial briefing organized by the presidential media team. He added that the federal government had slated 2022 for the completion of the East-West Road and that the present regime had prioritized the completion of the project. And those were the stories that made headlines this week. Moving on, the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mele Kiari, has said that the Petroleum Industry Act, just assented to by President Mohamed Buhari, will transform the nation's petroleum industry into a hub of business opportunities. Kiari also said the act will attract huge capital globally into the country's oil sector, strengthen cost recovery and ensure decent returns on investments. And we have joining us the Pengasin Zono Chairman from Port Harcourt, Peters Onita, who will be looking at all of the intrigues and, of course, reactions that have trailed the, uh, the signing. Uh, good evening to you. Many thanks for joining us on uh, Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Uh, good evening, Mr. Justice. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it is indeed our pleasure. Let's talk about the PIA. No, it has been a very long time. Some would say that it is a long time coming. It's been almost um, 30 years, and it has just been signed uh, on Monday by the president. Uh, what is Pengasin's uh, reaction to all of this? Uh, do you have any fears, any concerns concerning this particular act? Okay, first of all, it's important for us to look at where we are coming from. Just like you have mentioned, the issue of the PIB, which is later uh, PIA now, because of the signing of the president, have come a long way. For more than decades, Nigerians have been struggling to have a document, a legal framework that will be able to guide us in the oil and gas industry. So for us in Pengasan, having come this far and finally the president signing shows that Nigeria is ready to begin the journey for the development of the oil and gas industry. For us in Pengasan, it is a welcome development, and we want to appreciate the members of both houses of uh, both the Senate and House of Rep for having that courage to be able to pass that uh, that bill which the president just signed. We agree that there are a lot of things about the document that should be improved. But the first thing first is that it is a legal framework that we guide the oil and gas sector moving forward. And for us, it's a welcome development. All right. In a statement issued by uh, jointly by Pengerson and, uh, of course, uh, New Penga sometime last month, just before it was signed, uh, your association said uh, some of the issues they identify as gray, gray areas included board membership of unions, restriction on import license, single regulator in the industry, provision of incentive for investment in local refining, among others. So what exactly, can you just uh, throw more light on it uh, specifically, concerning the, uh, this issue of a uh, you know, single regulator for the industry? Okay, just as you know, Pengasan as an association operates within the oil and gas sector of Nigeria. And when we raised those alarms that we did between New Bank and Pengasan, it was because we have noticed some clear areas like you have mentioned and as us, as an association, what we wanted to achieve is for Nigeria and indeed the operators to be able to look at those gray areas like we have mentioned. A few days ago, we saw on air and uh, the Minister of Petroleum acknowledged that this document, just like any other document, which is not the law, cannot be perfect at the first instance. So those imperfections, those concerns, that have been raised, not only by Pengasan, but also, also raised by stakeholders uh, across the country. These are what the government said they will look into. So we are sure and we are hopeful that the opportunity to review some of these concerns will be addressed as we move forward. 
This is a document that will decide the future of Nigeria oil and gas industry. And it is only normal that those who are in it should be able to raise concern where it affects them. Our happiness is that government is willing to engage, government is willing to look at those issues. At the appropriate time, Pengasan, having discussed with government, will be able to give a final position on that. All right, Mr. Onita. Another issue that uh, is seemingly you know, controversial is the 3% for host communities and 30% frontier exploration fund. And uh, even, uh, even ministers and uh, governors have said that it will deplete the Federation account. But specifically, now, what's your take concerning the 3% for host communities and, of course, 30% frontier exploration fund? Okay, as an association, we have observed the concerns raised by the host communities across the board. And just like the president of Pengasan asked, 3% of what? Because it's important we know the 3%. The minister is saying it's about the operating costs. Others are saying it has to do with uh, the profits. But as it stands, we are happy that there is a template. Over the years, there is no legal framework in the industry. So if 3% is a starting point for government, and we have been given the windows, both stakeholders and community uh, stakeholders, to also raise our concern, I'm sure that it will be a stepping stone. Nothing is, uh, is enough. And I'm sure that even if they give 20% or more, it wouldn't be enough. But we now have a framework which the government have given as 3%. As we progress, in trying to look at these documents, look at areas we can make amendments, I'm sure that Nigerians will be better for it. So, so can as you an say... association, we are happy that the communities are being recognized, mm. and we know that uh, when the issues are being tabled, uh, more or better consideration or explanations will be given to all and it will be better for all of us. So would you now say it is um, Uhuru yet for the downstream sector in Nigeria with the uh, PIA now in force, although there is an implementation committee, would you say that uh, Nigeria will soon become a hub when it comes to downstream operations uh, you know, in petroleum across Africa? Well, we wouldn't say that it is Uhuru for the downstream sector, but what we will say is that it's a starting point for better things to come for the uh, industry and for the country. As you are aware, the Minister for State Petroleum is the chairman of a styling committee that will be able to look at these issues and be able to work out modality of its implementation. Though the president has signed, but you are also aware that the effectiveness, the effective framework will be worked out by this committee. So we'll wait and see how the community go about it. And as an association, we also make our opinions, our suggestions known to the appropriate people. It is only then that we can be able to come back and say whether it is a guru or not. But whether it is a step forward, yes, it is a step forward in the right direction. All right, uh, fine. Let's leave the PIA for one uh, second uh, and talk about other issues affecting um, operations and, uh, and, of course, the energy se sector, specifically with um, Pengasin and um, your operation. Uh, not so long ago, you addressed a press conference in Port Harcourt, River State, and you said uh, you expressed concerns concerning uh, insecurity and how you know, it has affected operations uh, specifically in that state. Can you tell us more? Okay, but you, you want us to talk about the... Security challenges the, and how it affects, the, uh, you know, the your operations. awareness of Pengasin. Yes. Okay, the security situation in this country is alarming. And uh, we don't need the soothsayer to explain to us what is happening in the country. Kidnapping is on the increase. People are being kidnapped for whatever reasons. Uh, the security situation... People can no longer sleep with their eyes closed. People, there is hardly any day in the national dailies of this country that you will not see one or two papers reporting about the insecurity in the country. You talk about the Boko Haram area, is the same. So as an association, we met in our neck and we agreed that as stakeholders in the economy of Nigeria, we must be able to add our voice 
to the security situation. As a people, we condemn the insecurity. But then we should also encourage the police officers and other security parastatters that have staked their life for the interests of all of us. So Pengasan is collaborating, trying to create the necessary security awareness in collaboration with relevant security agencies within the zone and within the country. So it is a program initiated by the leadership of Pengasan to, to first of all appreciate the policemen and women that are there and uh, saving all of us. But importantly, to create the awareness that will be able to save all of us. Mind you, our brothers, our sisters, our colleagues are those who are involved in this uh, security uh, uh, situation that we are complaining. In the industry where we operate, is just a norm that in every, every day you will hear one security kidnap, one overrun of one platform or the other. Our members are mostly what I would call the endangered species in this case, just like other Nigerians. So this program is our own little way to contribute to the security situation of the country. It's a step. This is just the first phase. The subsequent uh, phases will be made known as we progress. All right. Uh, let me just uh, get your candid opinion uh, just before we wrap up um, this particular segment. Uh, uh, when it comes to modular refineries uh, in Nigeria, what, what is your take specifically concerning that modular refinery and operations in as much as um, Dangote you know, is actually building a multi uh, billion naira, you know, uh, refinery here in Lagos. But what do you think about modular refineries? Do you think uh, the federal government should be looking in that direction? Well, on the issue of modular refinery, first of all, association position, Pengasan position, is that we should encourage our refineries internally to be able to produce and sustain uh, what we are going to use as a country. That has been the call of Pengasan and indeed uh, level over the years. So for modular refineries, it is difficult for us to appraise where we are, whether we are making progress or not. Recall that a few years ago, the vice president of this country made some visitation in some of these areas and approvals, executive approvals we are giving. But it is difficult for us now to ascertain whether these modular refineries have been able to contribute positively as we speak. However, the concept of modular refinery is a welcome development if adequate laws are being put in place for people to do business according to the laws of the land. So that will be our stake uh, on that for now. All right, we must say a very big uh, thank you to you, Peter um, Onita, uh, for joining us on um, Business Insight on Plus TV Africa, and indeed, uh, you know, telling us uh, the position of Pengerson concerning the recently signed PIA and, of course, other security threats in a region. We do appreciate your time. Thank you for this opportunity, and uh, God bless you. All right, yeah, God bless you too. Indeed, we have been speaking about the PIA and uh, we were joined by Peters Onita, the Zonal Chairman of Pengerson in Port Hackett in River State. And still talking about the PIA, according to the NNPC boss, Millie Carey, getting the petroleum legislation passed is the right thing to do because investors will not invest their money if they are not sure of how they are going to get their investment back and what benefits they can get from their investment as well as how stable the investment a climate is. Away from all of that, the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, is set to hold her 14th annual Banking and Finance Conference in repositioning the banking and finance industry as a catalyst for economic recovery, inclusion, and transformation of Nigeria. Take a look. It's a shame that we are still seeing people who are trying to game the system, uh, who are basically going to get tickets and seeking to cancel those tickets to try and arbitrage and all of that. Uh, but I think this, the, at the last bankers committee, uh, there was a press conference and where banks spoke to the fact that if we found people trying to game the system and people are going to sign an undertaking as they collect their dollars that they were traveling, and if they're trying to game the system, we will report them to law enforcement agents. Their accounts may be blocked 
and all of that. But this is not the forum to speak about that. But permit me to just say that um, it is going as smoothly as we would have expected it uh, to have gone. Um, the Nigerian GDP report, I think, we would leave that to the central bank to speak to um, once they finish, once, once it is ready, and I think they will provide, they will address the, the market next week. Now, Abbasie Kong spoke to digital infrastructure and the uh, revised or reduced uh, right of way charges. I spoke to the fact that uh, a few states had complied and brought it down uh, to basically enhance digital infrastructure. Uh, they spoke to, he spoke to uh, Kaduna State. Um, Lagos State, um, and I know that River State is looking at it. Um, I would, we would engage uh, most of our leaders, uh, our political leaders, uh, to basically see how they can speak to their other colleagues, all right, with a view to bringing down uh, the cost of, of, of this right of way to basically ensure that digital infrastructure is laid across the country um, in, 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 in a cost optimal, cost optimal manner. But thank you for raising it because it's something that a lot of people do pay attention to. In fairness, a few years ago, um, there were a lot more states that had done it. Um, even a those states had done it, um, and if we went up to the north, Sokoto state had done something. There were a couple of states that had, had embraced it. But I think the point you're making is the fact that we need all the state's governments um, doing things that will basically enhance um, or reduce the cost of digital infrastructure. And I think it's a good point, and we'll, we'll take it up from, from here. Um, speaking to the issue of the USSD, I think there's been... Um, it's not the right forum to speak to it, and I think that between the telcos and their regulators, the central bank and the committee of banks, I think we've reached what is a reasonable um, agreement as to the way forward, all right, um, so that the telcos can receive their charges directly from their customers in a manner that is ap appropriate for everyone. So I think that has been, that has been resolved, all right, and there's, there's a, a good working um, arrangement between the banks and the telcos if you like going into the future. You cannot underestimate the role of the banking system in supporting not just the survival of the economy, but in growth. Growth can only really be uh, in expansion of businesses and by extension, extension of credit facilities and other banking services. So, And the conference, which is set to hold sometime next month, will also uh, deal with issues concerning cyber crimes, uh, cryptocurrency, among other issues uh, related to the financial sector in Nigeria. And that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Kadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.